Well, good morning. We are glad to be back in Davenport. We were uh, very excited to get in our car and actually be able to drive somewhere. Um, we have been in, um, I was trying to count, 11 different cities since last time we saw you. Probably been on about 50 different trains. I think we've been in at least 25 to 30 pastry shops. Um, and um, have had just some really grand experiences. Uh, we just got back from a missions trip, for those of you who are not aware of that. Scott and I have um, just come back from our fifth trip with Dunamis Ministries, Bill and Carol Dew. And um, I'm just going to introduce um, what we've gone through in the last couple of weeks, and then Scott's going to um, talk about what we actually experienced. But in thinking about this morning, I was thinking I'm going to start with where we ended, which was the hurricane that uh, the east coast of this nation has experienced, Sandy, um, stopped our travel plans on Monday. Our flights were all canceled. And so we got the opportunity to uh, go into Zurich um, on Monday, just, well, just last Monday, and uh, to try to um, confirm our airline trip home. And we got to go to dinner. And um, in reflecting back on what happened that evening, we went to dinner with a couple, three other couples and Bill and Carol Dew. Bill and Carol Dew are a couple that we met about six years ago in 2006. They go to different, different countries. They go to South America regularly. They're going to Europe. They've been to Australia. And we got invited to be able to go with them. And what those trips are really about are really the same thing that we do here every week is believing that God wants to work through all of us as individuals to minister to one another. And what Bill and Carol do is they take teams of people into other nations, into churches, and say, hey guys, you're no different than we are. We're regular people who have learned to engage with the Holy Spirit and let God work through us to be able to minister to each other and because Jesus said that you would heal the sick. Here's how you go about doing that and demonstrating it and then equipping them very simply to be able to say, hey, I can pray for you, let's do that. So I'll let Scott talk to you about what our trip was like in Austria and Germany. Yeah, I remember one time talking with uh, Bill Farb. Actually, it was, it was when we returned back last year and Bill, Bill was here. And I, I looked at him and said, Bill, you would love it over there. They're just like us. And, you know, Bill and I are not exactly known for being the most vibrant, emotional people. <laughs> and in many ways, you know, the, the, the Germans do fit the stereotype that many of us have of the Germans. You know, for quite a bit, they're, they, they can be very stoic, they can be very precise. Really, much of the European and the German culture, you, you, you take out as far as the language barrier, the culture is, is very, very similar. You, know, you head down to uh, South America, and that is much more of a stepping into a different world. And so we get an opportunity to really interact with, with people on very much a peer level. And when you see, as far as that you're working with them, in, with the Holy Spirit, and seeing what the Holy Spirit wants to do in their lives, and have the opportunity to bless them and have them bless you, it's wonderful. Just to give you an idea of what some of our experiences were when we first got there, we landed in Vienna, Austria. Vienna is, is a, a very different city than anything I have ever encountered before. This is the first time that I would describe that I have been to one of the great European capitals. And when you step off the airplane, you begin to move throughout the city, you begin to identify there is something very unique here about these people. There is something very unique about that city. As you walk around that city and you take a look at many of the buildings which have been built there, you get a sense of the power and the wealth and the grandeur that not only Vienna controlled, but what many of the European capitals controlled. And, and one of the things that it really pointed out to me was 
the difference between what the European kings valued and what was valued when this country was set up. But one of the things that was, there was a real, while there were some things that I looked at at that and I thought, wow, that is just so far outside of my paradigm. At the same time, I can look at it and say, there is an incredible blessing which has been placed upon this city. You know, you're, you're walking through the streets of Vienna and you're looking at these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of year olds buildings which are built on a scale that is almost unimaginable. You know, we're talking about a, a, the, the center of Viennese government, which is, which is in the city center down there, which when you look at the entire complex of that, it's like 10 times the size of the White House. This is at the Vienna Vineyard. Uh, you can see Bill is over here on the right hand side with his hand raised up and his interpreter is standing right next to him. But what Bill was doing here is he was, this was, he had asked a number of people, you know, gone through kind of a list of saying, hey, here are some things that the Holy Spirit is telling us. If you have this problem, uh, stand up. And so people stood up and then he prayed for them. Nobody really kind of moved around, and he asked everybody after he had, he had prayed for about a minute, minute and a half, okay, raise your hand if you sense any difference. And you can see out of the folks that are standing here, about half of the folks that had stood up are raising their hand saying, yeah, I can tell a real difference here. You know, we've kind of done similar things like that in our church. Here, this was at the end of the meetings at the church in Vienna. And when I mentioned about, you know, we get to go over and be a blessing to them, and be able to show them, hey, this, you know, this is what it means to be naturally supernatural. This is what it means to live the Christian life on a daily basis and expect that things are going to happen. We then turned around and had them all pray for us. And this is a, a tunnel that all of the leaders of the, of the Vienna Vineyard had, had set up. And then we walked through and they blessed us as we are walking through. Sometimes people call them fire tunnels or blessing tunnels. But it was just, it was so fantastic to have the opportunity to engage with, with, with these folks and say, hey, this is what we're doing. Give us what you're doing. This I just got to tell you about. Threw this in. This is our one touristy photo on here. Everybody else, when we got done in Vienna, they decided they were going to take a plane trip. I, on the other hand, took a look at, hmm, looking at a map. Here's Vienna, here's Zurich. That's the Alps that run all the way from one end to the other. That has got to be one spectacular trip. We didn't take the airplane, we took the train. This is what it looked like the entire way. It was like taking a five hour train ride through Yosemite National Park. It was gorgeous. This was at a meeting in a town called Bad Sackingen, Germany. But Bad Sackingen was a, the, the first meeting that we had when we got to Germany in, in the evening there. And we had the opportunity to, again, go into the, into the church to present to them, hey, this is how you can work within, you know, just the normal Christian life. The Holy Spirit wants to interact with you. God wants to heal. God loves to heal. And this is, this is how we engage, engage with him in doing that. We had a wonderful opportunity here at the end of the service to pray and prophesy over the leaders of this church. And the, the, the pastor was a very humble man. And as we were prophesying over him, tears started rolling down his cheeks. The, the folks on his, on his worship team were a little bit more emotional than that. I mean, you, you could, you, it, was, it, was, it looked like it was like pouring water on a dry desert. This is my favorite photo out of what, what we had here. This is Hubert and Avasio in Mulheim, Germany. Hubert, the one on the left, he came up to me during the ministry time and in very broken English told me that he was having a problem with his ear. Didn't really know what the details were because, well, his English was slightly better than my German, and that ain't saying much. But I figured out, okay, problems with the ears, I can pray for that. So I put my hands up on Hubert's ears, and I, and I prayed for healing, prayed that the, the bones in his ears be re-knit, prayed that the, the eardrum be strengthened, that the nerve endings would stand up, and then ta talked to him afterwards and said, hey, uh, okay, you know, I typically I do worse, same, better, and he's like, oh better. 
Hubert was more the typical German. Good. <laughs> so Hubert left, and I prayed for a couple other folks. Then, Hubert and Avasio, his friend here in the red jacket, Avasio is actually, he's Italian, but in that part of the country, you're kind of sitting right there at the confluence of where there's Switzerland, Italy, France, and Germany all sitting right together. So you get a real mix of a lot of folks from around the, around the continent. And Avasio speaks much, more, much better English. And he comes up and says, oh, Hubert came up, he had uh, uh, a ringing, uh, t t and I said, tinnitus? And he goes, yeah, tinnitus. He had tinnitus in his ears, the, the ringing is all gone, and now he wants to give his life to Christ. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I got to pray, you know, a very short prayer with Avasio uh, interpreting with me uh, to Lee Hubert to invite Jesus into his heart, and uh, you know, Avasio being an Italian, he was much more expressive. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was jumping up and down. He was happy. God really loves it when you decide, I want to have a relationship with you. Yeah. 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 Moldheim also was, was a place where he had an opportunity to sit down and do a lot of sozos with people. Sozo is, is a type of prayer counseling that Susan, myself, Gary Jones, Gary Ellis, a few others have been trained in trained in, excuse me, and uh, we sit down with the folks and we, our job is to listen to where the Holy Spirit wants to go, what questions need to be asked. And the job of the person which is receiving ministry is to listen to what are the answers that the Holy Spirit is giving them. And as we walk through this model of what is called listening prayer, we navigate through whatever you know, issues are that they want to uh, address or whatever issues are that the Holy Spirit wants to address at the time. And you see tremendous freedom come out of, of those instances. So we had an opportunity to take several people through Sozo on this trip as well and really see some uh, um, improvements in their situations. Shopheim we got to go back to. It's one of the two places that we went on our first trip and our last trip. Shopheim, when we got there, was a very, first time we went there, you could tell it was a very oppressed city. Shopheim, we went there two years ago, we went there this year, we, or last year, and we went there this year. It is amazing to see the change that has taken place in that church. The first year that we went there, it was, for lack of a better way to describe it, anemic. The pastor had just taken over after I think five pastors had gone through and tried to do something in that area and just could not have a breakthrough. Over the last two years, you look at that church today and you would not recognize it. The youth are on fire. That, that over half of that meeting was young people under the age of 20. And they, they are out there doing, they are doing street ministry, they are engaging in different types of prophetic ministries out, out with the people. It is amazing to see what has taken place there. Yeah, you know, I guess you, I could go on and tell you about different places, you know, different things that happen while we're there, but what's really interesting about the work that we've been able to do over there is, is Bill and Carol have a real ministry of being trailblazers. And they go into areas and they release into those areas the foundations of what it means to engage with the Holy Spirit, what it means to see people get healed, how you can pray for one another. One of the last stories that I want, that I want to tell was the story from when we were heading out of Lorak, which is the city in Germany where we, where we stayed and kind of used that as our hub, and heading down to Zurich. Those of us that were in the one car, which was a van, uh, there was uh, four couples. Then there are the two couples in the car behind us. Their story was pretty spectacular. As they're driving down to Zurich, and they're talking with the young woman who is driving the car, you know, they, they asked her, well, who's the most famous person that you've ever driven? And she kind of him haws around, and, and one of the guys just kind of jokingly says something about, oh, well, you know, you got two famous people in the back seat here, referring to Bill and Carol, and the work that we've been doing, and all the folks that they've been speaking to. And so she asked, well, what do you guys do? And so Bill is describing what, they, what we've been doing over the last couple of weeks. And she looks up in the rearview mirror, and she goes, what's your name? And he tells her what Bill and Carol do. She 
busts out crying. Turns out, this woman had two of her very good friends that had gone to the meetings in Lorach, had gone to the meetings in, I think, Molheim, and she had desperately, desperately wanted to get to the meetings, but she had to work. And now she has an hour and a half of one-on-one -on -one time with the people that she was hoping to be able to go see. And they wound up ministering to her, praying for her. At one point, they're on the Autobahn. They're trying to get down to, to, to Zurich. She is crying. Her hands are shaking. And Dave Miller's sitting in the front seat. You want me to drive? <laughs> But we just don't really think about as far as how, how we can impact people in these ways and in, in what we're able to do over there. Because, you know, where as much as they were a blessing to us, it really was something different for them to experience in many cases. We saw a lot of people get healed. We saw a lot of people get set free of, of, uh, of different things. And what we wanted to do this morning, we want to pray for one another. We want to minister to one another. So first thing I would ask, if you have a pain in your body, stand up. The rest of you are going to be the ministry team. This is what we're going to do. We need at least one person to go to each person that is standing up. So if you're standing up for prayer, raise your hand. One person go to each of these folks. And when you get someone that comes up, puts their hand on your shoulder, put your hand down so we'll know who's, who's getting prayer and who's not. Okay, good. I think we got everybody covered. Now, for, those, for that person who, wants, who is seeking prayer, in 20 seconds, tell the people who are going to be praying for you, where does it hurt? What's the problem? 20 seconds, that's all, not a life history. 20 seconds. And once you find out where it hurts, pray for that person. Pray that that condition be removed. If there's a pain in their shoulder, pray. Shoulder, be healed. Pain, leave. Muscles, be restored. Ligaments, tendons, muscles, be strengthened. Vertebra, be aligned. Ear, hear. Eye, see. Pain, go. Holy Spirit, we agree with you. Lord, release your angels into this room. Release your angels here to minister to these people. Okay, now check in with them. Check and see, move your body, test it out. See if there's any difference. If you need to bend over to check something, bend over. If it helps you to lift your legs, lift your legs. Move your arms. Check and see if that condition has changed. Now, if you have seen any improvement, doesn't matter whether it is 10% or 100%, if you've seen any improvement in your condition from, from where it was just a moment ago, wave your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Praise God. Folks, that's what's called healing. That is a good thing.